Guys, back again. It's your boy Karan. Um, reflecting on my twenties, I told you I just turned thirty earlier this week on Monday, to be exact, September twelfth. I was born nineteen ninety two, and uh, what can I say about my twenties? The fabulous twenties that we all want to go back to. Um, well, first of all, graduated high school, went up to a junior college. Um, that didn't pretty much work out, but I did find out. Um, that was kind of like the start of one of the uh, a pivotal moment in my life. Uh, had uh, some medical issues go on. I was diagnosed with one thing. They said it was like a spider bite. And as much, some of y'all may know, it led up to it being actually a tumor. That led up to, you know, me finding out that I had skin cancer. And then, you know, that led up to like, I found out at 24, I'm 29. And I'm kind of just, just starting to get like mentally sane from that. I don't know why I keep looking away, but um, yeah, that was a, a rough period of my life. And I don't want to say it ruined my 20s because I feel like a lot of mistakes that I made. Um, first of all, like my early 20s, I spent so much time chasing a, a false dream. I swore I, I wanted to be in the NFL. I, I wasn't going to give up on that dream. And I'm not saying you waste time chasing things that don't really pan out because you can learn some things from them. But it wasn't nothing that I learned outside of whatever you do find, put your all into it. Because whatever you find out that you're good at, put your all into it, especially with the times we're in now. And, you know, eventually when you get good, you'll find out how to monetize it. And, you know, that could be a purpose right there. You know, so I spent a lot of time trying to play football, trying to apply to these schools after I didn't work at Globe Institute of Technology. Um, I left after a semester, um, didn't make it through the spring camp after I found out what I found out. Then I tried again at uh, Mercer County, which was Gattaca, Gattaca, some of y'all in the Jersey area, maybe even more than that. I'm not even sure if they're around still, but Gattaca, and that didn't work, the coach. Um, I didn't really agree with how he was running certain things, and I just came to realize that it ain't really for me, um, per se, for football. So, you know, I kind of just dipped on that and I know a lot of young men struggle with this like you know in high school we think we got it all mapped out like I'm gonna be a football player basketball player whatever uh a rapper a movie star and then you know when you have that realization that this ain't not only is it not going to happen but this isn't even something that I want to pursue you know what I'm saying this isn't even something that I want to put my all into to get better at you know on days even on days that I don't feel like it um, so that realization happening and then just realizing like, damn, so which direction am I going with my life? You know, so for years and especially after the, the, the first surgery, you know, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I, I wanted to be a personal trainer for the longest. Um, you know, that started, um, I started to get in shape, you know, I was training with aunt, um, you know, he would throw me some clients. I started to get clientele. I started to lose a lot of weight. I just, me personally, you know, things that I gain from training, I just don't want to put up with the 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 waiting in the gym for people that don't show up, the hiding and working out with clients so gym owners don't get mad at you and kick you out, the, you know, the, the pop quizzing clients that don't really care about it, um, you know, and also putting in the extra work to get better for the clients that do care about it, like, you know, once again, I found myself in a position that, yeah, I want to be in great shape and I, I want to adapt fitness as a, a, a healthy lifestyle. So, you know, I can really get the most out of this, squeeze the most juice out of this orange, so to speak, which is my body. But, um, yeah, I just didn't get it. Like, I just, you know, I would get the money from training. I would invest it back in there. But, you know, I just didn't like training like that. Like, I just like, you know... Ain't, I don't know. I just don't want to deal with the, like everything that you want to do has a has a, has a pro and a cons to it. The, like the big con of training is one, you got to be a great salesman or work to be a great salesman. And a lot of people, once they realize that, because it's like, yo, just because you're in shape, you're not going to get clients. That don't mean that people are going to start flocking to you. Like you have to be able to sell people on why you're great for, you know, what they're looking for, you know, and a lot of people aren't willing to do that. Well, there's people out there that are. And once people see that they're losing money, doing nothing, some people work for a gym and they just sit there all day waiting for people to train with them or waiting for a gym to tell them who to train with. So you spent hundreds of dollars trying to get your certification. You spent hours and hours and hours studying all for that. And 
quiet is kept. I know we see a lot of successful trainers on Instagram, like, but for the most part, for every one person that's doing really good in training, it's a lot of people that's just bullshitting. And I was one of them. And I just didn't want to be a bullshitter. Like, you know, you got somebody's body, you know, in your in your trust. And I think if you don't take it serious, then you really shouldn't even, you know, I, I take it serious enough to want to do it for myself and hopefully inspire somebody to want to get in shape and, you know, be the best version of themselves. But I don't take it serious enough to want to stay up late at nights, you know, studying for NASM or ACE or studying to see how I can get better for this client. And, you know, what's their strengths, their weaknesses? What have they gotten better at? What did they need to improve on? I didn't yeah, I didn't want to do that. And, you know, like I said, you had some clients that wanted it and a lot of clients that just was like just just paying you just because. And this is like, mm, I don't love this enough. So that's why I just wasn't really with it. And I wasn't really trying to get, you know, to it or do do things like that. So, uh do the training and then you know shortly after I uh tried to go into school for barbering um I watch a lot of uh AMS and like self-improvement channels and one thing that uh they talk about is you know why you find your purpose and I'm leading into that um you know try to get a certification so that you're able to make good money you know as you're trying to get your purpose off the ground so I try to get my hand at barbering Again, you know, once again, it just wasn't for me. Um, and I think the one thing I started to realize about myself is I don't have a problem making money, but looking for that oomph that I'm going to be willing to go above and beyond to see it through, it, that's been hard for me to find throughout my 20s. Um, that's one thing I know. So I have a problem with seeing things through because, you know, there's a lot of things that I think I'm interested in that I'm really not, you know, and I've sat down, wrote lists, um, you know, uh, what can I go to school for that I can, you know, get a trade school or a certification for. And some of the things I'm just not really interested in. So um, I, I stopped barbering and I just started working for a couple months. You know, I was working at like TD Bank and a couple of delivery service jobs like FedEx and Amazon and, you know, just BS and working. But then I started to get in, you know, some really good shape. Um, so I skipped a whole lot, but I started to get in good shape and this was the beginning of this year. So I just want to say like, let me re rewind a little bit. Cause, um, the first surgery, um, it was a 10 hour surgery, you know, they did what they did, took the tumor out and, you know, they had to clean up a lot of stuff up there. So, but I had to get tissue expansion procedures once every other month for about five years after that. And then get a surgery to pull the tissue forward just a little bit. So, um, you know, I was going through that on top of all of that. So my mind just wasn't really in the right place. Um, you know, I just didn't know where I wanted to go in my life. But I, one thing I will say about myself is I never stopped trying. And, you know, usually when I get in down, like start feeling down about myself or whatever, um, as of lately, you know, closer to my 30s, I've just been, okay, I'm going to feel this, but it's time for me to think about how to get in a better position. And that's lately what I've been focusing on. I was like, okay, this happened. And, you know, I had a setback. I had a loss a couple months ago, a couple months before my birthday. And, you know, I was down in the dumps. I was fucked up for about a week, you feel me? But then I just had to realize, like, what's the solution to this issue? First of all, how did I get here? You know, you take accountability for what you could have, what you didn't do, what you could have done better. And now it's time to learn from that. And, okay, now that it, I'm at rock bottom and I'm looking up, what am I going to do that I didn't that I did last time that got me what I needed so that I wouldn't be here? And what am I going to do that I didn't do last time that put me in this position? You understand? So I started to really just search for a solution in a lot of a lot of a lot of the problems that I had. Instead of just, you know, sitting around whining about it, I just started to say, like, I started to get better at problem solving for myself. Um, so I know it may seem like a short period of time, but you got to think like I was trying things, trying things, trying things. And then when it didn't work, I would just sit there and sulk. And now it's like, you know, when something doesn't work, I'm just like, OK. And what I do is I, I can't I can meditate, but I don't meditate on things like that. So when I'm trying to meditate on things like that, I sit still when I'm meditating to clear my mind. But when I'm trying to meditate on something that I'm trying to solve, I pace back and forth in my room. So. You know, I'm just thinking about, all right, how can I do this? How can I do this? And like, boom, okay, then I got this. All right, okay, so now that I got this, where can I take it from there? 
boom. So it's like a tree. It starts off with one branch and you got other branches on the tree that start to come to your mind. And you start to say, all right, let me write this down to see if I could kind of mesh this together and come up with a plan to get me out of this hole. And that's what that's what happened for me. You know, it took me like a good day, day and a half where I was really just pacing back and forth. And I just said, OK, here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I need to do day in and day out. Here's what I need to check every single week. And this is this is going to get done. Proud of myself that I've been able to do that and then really put the pedal to the metal and get get back on square one. Um, so, you know, as I wind down my 20s to be able to finish off like that and then kind of have a little mental switch up here and kind of, you know, learn from all of my past mistakes. You know, obviously you're happy about the things that went right for you, but the things that didn't my advice to you is really try to learn from like one day, just sit down and just reflect your life. Like, okay, what went right and what went wrong that was in my control. And then whatever went wrong that was in my control, can I fix it? Is it fixable about me? And if this is fixable, how, how, how is this going to impact my life in a positive way and the lives, the lives of others around me, you know? So that's been my mental as of recently. So I came up with a better plan. Um, I'm not going to go to school, um, as most of you know from searching the channel, uh, I found that stand-up comedy is something I want to pursue for the rest of my life. Now, it doesn't pay me, so it's still just a hobby. How I'm be making money is, you know, I came up with a plan on how I'm going to be on the road. So now I can make my own schedule, drive and lift, Uber, DoorDash, um, Postmates, Uber Eats, Grubhub, you know, things like that. All those combined, you know, I hit a schedule for myself. This is a number I need to see throughout the week. This is anything under this is unacceptable. Um, if I get over that, it's cool. It's just icing on the cake. But as far as to make sure the bills is paid and, you know, things like that and, um, you know, good savings, I'm able to try to work on comedy with a clear state of mind because I'm not thinking about finances, you know, times have changed. And that was one of the things that helped me. Like had I lost my will and been at rock bottom in the 70s 80s 90s and early 2000s yeah i'd have been <laughs> i'd have been fucked for a longer period of time but i'd have got out of it but like now guys if you got a bike you can make money doordash uber eats grubhub if you got a car you can definitely make money it's just that what i realize is one a lot of people are lazy so unless they have somebody, because, you know, we're in the entrepreneur area. So unless they have somebody telling them, oh, you got to make money or you got to do this, you got to do that. Like you you got to clock in at this time. You got to, you know, be at work at this time. And I want you to start in this aisle and sort in this aisle. Da, da, da. Like an entrepreneur is just you and only you until you get a team around you. That, and that usually happens after you've seen success from you working day and night, building it up. So, you know, most people aren't that there are more workers that think they want to be that because a lot of people are doing DoorDash, Lyft and Uber. And like myself, it wasn't the problem of making money. It's just where the money was going and investing back in myself the proper way. So knowing what I know now um, going forward, you can make that mistake again. So, yeah, and I just, you know, speaking to a couple people that I trust and uh, mentors and everything is just like, listen, you can go back to school and try to get a certification to get a higher paid job in this area. But if you really, truly want to do comedy, that's just going to only be taking time away from it. The only time you need to be taken away from comedy is if you're at the gym, showering, sleeping, or you're on the road making money. Other than that, every other hour better go into comedy. It made sense to me. Because plan B is how to make more money so I can stay the course. There's like plan B don't involve, all right, fuck, I'm like, I gotta go get back to this. Like, nah, plan B, all right. We ain't making money here no more. We got to make money over here because I'm still going to be doing comedy. I still got to go to open mics. I still got to work on my craft, you know, so probably going to have to, you know, redirect the, the GPS here and there, reroute the GPS. But other than that, like I'm not getting off course of what I see in front of me or what I believe can be my future if I put the work in. So, you know, that's just what I learned about myself in my 20s. And, you know. I got a dope group of friends, uh, amazing family, parents, and you know, through it all, like I said, you're going to beef with people, you're going to disagree with your family and everything, but you realize, you know, especially when you're at rock bottom, who's there and you know, who's just there for you to make them feel good. So, uh, 
my advice is try to take things one day at a time. You know, if you hear something that gets you like, like you want to react just right away and maybe not the best way, try to take a deep breath and why is this getting such a reaction out of me right now? You know, try to be careful, more careful of your surroundings. Try to be more careful of, you know, uh, the people you hang around. And I know in the cutoff culture we got now, like, you know, like people deserve second chances. There are certain people in your life that deserve second chances. Because I know everybody makes it seem like it's cool to just cut pe- this person off, that person off, this person off. Because, you know, who could only stress me out? Who could only give me a hard time and things like that? It's like as if you're not doing that to other people. You know, so we just got to get better at screening out who we have around us. And, you know, if you're still in your 20s and you feel like you haven't made progress, just keep trying because you know 30 to 40 is still you still very young like very young you know that's one thing i had to realize like and you know now you know people talk all the time about you know you're going to turn 30 this and that and it's just like i don't feel no different i actually felt blessed on my birthday i ain't do shit besides make money and just you know just just sit back and soak in all the birthday love i was getting man just realizing how blessed i am like you know I was just just a month and a half ago. I was like flat on about you know flat on my face, broke rock bottom, and then you know, month and a half later, you know, putting that plan into motion, I'm doing a lot better and I'm getting back on my feet. So you know, I could squeal and cry about oh I didn't have this super lit birthday that I could take on pictures on the gram and show everybody. You know, I wanted to have a good time and you know show the world but you know hey listen certain things come before that and the older I got to realize I stopped caring about people's opinions because they listen look there's a lot of people out there flashing like they got it and they live in paycheck to paycheck should they car break down something go wrong it's catastrophe chaos speaking from experience <laughs> so um, you know try not to look at other people who may be doing good on these social platforms And be jealous. But like I said, I don't try to say, oh, this person ain't doing this. This person ain't doing that. I know there are people that's frauding. But just, like I said, try to be motivated by, like, I need to go hard. I need to, I mean, step my shit up. If that's what motivates you. Content motivates me. I need to go harder in content. So, and I just realize now, especially now I'm 30, you know, showing up every day and putting your best foot forward is what really matters consistently. And you'll see results. So anybody that's over 30, that just turned 30, that just left their 20s, man, if you want to comment down below what you learned in your 20s, um, what you're going to take it to the next decade, let me know. uh, (laughs) Let me know down below, man, guys. And if you like this video, uh, hit the like button, guys. I thought this video was thinking about it all day. Um, And I just like I said, I'm excited for where I'm going from 30 to 40. So. I said hit that notification bell so you never miss out on any more videos guys and that's it man i'm out